वेलकम टू लेक्चर फाइव ऑफ एन एल पी सो टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग स्ट्रिंग सिमिलैरिटी and in particular we will be discussing the edit distance which is uh, one way of quantifying the similarity between two strings and uh, if we have time uh, at the end of this lecture towards the end of this lecture we might start uh, language modeling or specifically the probabilistic approach to language modeling uh, we do have a quiz today at the end of class it will start at 11:05 so the quiz is uh, 10 minutes long and uh, you will have uh, about five questions and those five questions have to be done in sequence so you can't return back to a question so the questions would be presented to you in a linear fashion <clears throat> okay excuse me <clears throat> so i hope all of you are doing well so are there any questions from the previous lecture hey sir can you please uh, tell the concept of scalar weights and vector weights uh, i think i missed you at the start phir se mujhe bataye kya keh rahe hain सर और वेक्टर वेक्टर के बारे में थोड़ा सा बता यस सर ओके so uh, we briefly talked about uh, representations and which is also a key subject that we will be discussing throughout this course so i just mentioned briefly that you can represent your linguistic unit of interest which we also sometimes call a type in some way that is expressive the most least expressive way of course is assign an id to it so for example id uh for example is equal to 2 3 6 4 5 might be a specific word in your vocabulary let's say the word uh um, any word that you can think of so and for example so but this id doesn't capture much information about this word it's just a uh, index to this word so we would like to have more representative representations more expressive representations for words or other linguistic units that we are dealing with so one way is uh, instead of ids you can have weights so you can assign a weight to each word so maybe uh, you assign a word a weight of let's say 1.25 to word and so now this 1.25 uh is much more expressive of course what it captures would depend on how you compute that weight and we will discuss one way of computing such weights uh, one or two ways uh later on uh, one approach is the tf idf approach term frequency inverse document frequency you can also think of a very simple way scalar way of uh, representing a word is the count of the word in the document so if and occurs let's say five times so you can say the weight is 5 if and occurs 5 times in the doc so this is a scalar way of representing just one value <clears throat> for the word and but let's say if you want to and of course this ha- this is somewhat more expressive than let's say just the id it has the notion of count in it and of course as i said weights can include a bit more refined notions as well but still it's just one value so you can represent and with more values and you can put all those values into a vector let's say 300 length vector so you can have 
and represented by a 300 length vector, maybe with some values like 0 0.5, uh, 0, minus 0 0.5, 1, uh, 0 0.25, and so on. Now, this is a much more expressive representation for the word and. Of course, uh, we will discuss later on how you can find such a representation, which we also call embedding, because you are now representing this word and you can uh, represent this word as a point in a three dimensional space. So there are 300 dimensions. So you can, if you are able to draw a space with 300 dimensions, this word and would be a point and all other words also would be a point. So that's why this is sometimes called an embedding. <clears throat> so, uh, so basically uh, the difference between scalar and vector representation, meaning that vector representations are more expressive. You can uh, design vector representation that can capture various aspects, aspects of the word, syntactic uh, aspects, semantic aspects, uh, contextual information, pragmatic information, and so on. So it's much more expressive rather than just an ID, for example. So is that clear? Yes, sir. Any other question? <clears throat> so now let's move on to string similarity. And the idea between string similarity is that, let's say if you have two strings, X and Y, we would like to compute the similarity or dissimilarity. So let's say D, X and Y should be a number, continuous number, let's say, uh, generally it's, it's a dissimilarity. So it's going to be a, uh, you can say a value from zero to in general infinity. So zero means that there is no dissimilarity, meaning that they are similar, exactly, exact match. And of course, infinity would mean that uh, there's uh, a lot of dissimilarity between those two strings. So X and Y are two strings. So in general, X could be of length M, string of length M, and Y is of length N. So in general, they could be of the same size as well. So M and N could be different, but they could in general be different. Mm -hmm. So this is the uh, idea here. Of course, here, this is simple string matching. That's why we call it string similarity. Later on, we will also discuss other ways of quantifying the similarity between linguistic units uh, like words that are more expressive, just the same definition, uh, same discussion that we had earlier regarding representation. Here we are simply comparing characters between those two strings. So let's say if you have a string like live, Let's say this is X and you have a string like life. So we need to be able to quantify the dissimilarity between them by just looking at the characters and the sequence in which those characters appear in both of those words. In this particular case, of course, uh, both strings are of the same length. So one of the easiest way to quantify the dissimilarity is what is known as the Hamming distance. And you might have come, come across this some, in somewhere else as well. So this only works for uh, equal length strings, meaning that M is equal to N. All right. So in this particular case, we have L-I-V-E, L-I-F-E. So how does uh, Hamming distance work? It just compares each character in sequence. So L and L is a match. I and I is a match. V and F is not a match. And Hamming distance does a substitution. If you substitute one value to the other, so that's one substitution. And then of course, uh, you have E and E is also a match. 
So in this case, you had to do one substitution. Uh, so in that case, Hamming distance is one. So Hamming distance is equal to one here. So of course, if those two strings do not overlap at each place, so let's say if I have something like A, B, C, and D, and the other word is of course life here, Hamming, Hamming distance would be equal to four. So in other words, Hamming distance allows substitution only. So there is no, as we will see later on, insertion and deletion. So substitution operation is allowed, but insertion and de de deletion operators are not allowed. And of course, the other limitation is that Hamming distance is only computable for strings that are of the same length. <clears throat> so, um, so this is somewhat limited. Uh, usually in uh, NLP and other applications, we use what is known as the edit distance. So edit distance allows three operations, insertion, deletion, and substitution. Substitution to spelling, substitution. All right. So it allow, allows three operations, and also it works for when n, which is the first string, in general is not equal to. So it also works when m is equal to n, but it can also work when m is not equal to n. And in doing added distance, you also achieve what is called string alignment. Meaning that after doing, uh, if you're computing added distance at the end of the day, you might, you will be able to also align these two strings. So you get an alignment as well, meaning that you get an alignment that gives you the minimum added, minimum uh, distance between those two strings. Mm -hmm. So let's uh, look at this uh, edit distance a bit more detail. So let me go to the slides. So we are we are given two uh, strings here. Uh, I think intention and execution, and we have three operations: insertion, deletion, and substitution. So if we give a cost, you can assign a cost to each operation. Cost meaning that, uh, and distance is of course the sum of all those costs. So if you give a cost of one, meaning that you are just counting the operation, then between the two you have a distance of five, but if you give a cost of two to substitution and one and one for insertion and deletion, the cost or the distance between these two strings is then eight. Uh, this particular form where you have a cost of cost that is twice for substitution as compared to that for insertion and deletion is called the Levenstein distance, which is an added distance that has a cost for substitution that is twice that for insertion and deletion. And as you notice in this figure, so we have, we have also aligned the two strings, meaning that where there's match, you have a match, where there's a substitution, you do a substitution, where there's a deletion. In the first string, you have an asterisk there, where you have an insertion in the second string, you have an asterisk there. So we will discuss this as uh, we will uh, see the example in more detail. So this is just to uh, give you a quick idea of the added distance.
And of course, uh, added distance has various applications of string matching in general or string similarity in particular actually has several applications. We talked about, for example, uh, uh, spell correction. You can also think about paraphrase detection. So plagiarism detection, for example. So if you are copying some stuff from some material, we want to determine whether the copy is to a high extent that leads to plagiarism. And since there is an alignment as well, so in biological sciences, you all, we like to align various sequences, biological sequences. So DNA sequences, protein sequences, and so on. So that is also an application. Uh, added distance usually is also used in many evaluation operations in NLP. For example, if you are doing lang, for example, if you are doing uh, machine translation, so you have one, uh, so you have generated a translation, and you also have some correct translations. So you like to check how accurate is that generated translation to the correct translation. Again, you will do a string similarity. Of course, there are some somewhat slightly more sophisticated approaches for this. We will discuss this when we discuss machine translation. But a very simple way of evaluating the performance of machine translation is string similarity or using the added distance. So, uh, so we talked about uh, added distance last time as well. So added distance is the minimum cost incurred in transforming one string, which is X to the other string, which is Y. Minimum cost. If cost is one for each operation, then we can say that the minimum edits or mid minimum transformations required to transform one string to the other. So you notice the word keyword minimum. So in general, it looks like an optimization problem. So yes, it is an optimization problem. So optimization problems can also be thought as, as search problems. <clears throat> So, and we discussed this last time as well. So it's, so, so we are, we want to move from one string X to the other string Y. And let's say we give the example of bet, uh, cat to bet. So there could be various ways uh, you can move from one to that. You can even repeat re-repeat this. Let's say I start from cat, I delete a C and get 80. I again put C back in there, C A T. I now delete T, I get C A. I, uh, for example, now uh, delete C, I get A. I now put in B, I get A, B A. And now I do B E. And then I now do B E T. So I did many operations to get from CAT to BET. But what we want is the minimum number of operations. And if you assign cost to those operations, the minimum cost to go from one string to the other string. So that is added distance, not any arbitrary number of operations to go from one string to the other. So as you can see, there could be multiple ways of going from one string to the other. We want the one that is minimum which leads to the minimum cost. Mm -hmm. And this optimization problem uh, or search problem can be solved very effectively or efficiently using a generic algorithm, which all of you must have studied somewhere called dynamic programming. So dynamic programming is a approach for solving complex problems by solving their uh, simpler components. So in other words, if you have a problem that you want to solve, you divide the problem to smaller components, solve the smaller components, and then build the solution for the bigger component. So such, uh, so dynamic problem, programming typically applies to problems that can be decomposed in that fashion, meaning that bigger 
the full problem can be decomposed into smaller pro sub problems and then those sub problems can be uh, uh, can be combined to give you the solution to the full problem so in the case of uh, added distance so you can think of the sub problems that let's say we talked about cat and bat so you can think of starting with uh, so you can think of starting with a string which is null right and then you want to go to a string which is just b so x is null meaning empty string and y is just one character so what would you need to do to go from this to that you will be inserting b in y right so let's say if i again take one step forward b and e so now you are inserting e and then null b e t and then we are inserting b e t but of course we are starting from a null so what i'm saying is uh, we will start with simpler problems in a structured way and build go to the bigger strings simpler strings and big to the full string and we will reuse some of these solutions to get to the a bigger solution. So let's uh, look at the algorithm and then we might, we will go over the uh, representation which would make things much more clearer. So we have already looked at this. So as we said, we are we are going to use to solve we are going to use dynamic programming to solve the edit distance problem. So basically we will define, uh, <clears throat> I think it's in the previous slide. <clears throat> so let me go back to my slides. Okay. So, <clears throat> so let's say again, going back to my notation, X uh, is the string, first string, and Y is the second string. The lengths are M and N, all right? So we define the added distance by this two dimensional array D, I and J. Where I is the index for the first string and J is the index for the second string. So, <clears throat> and these indices I, so I basically ranges from to M, which is the first string, and J ranges from N. So we are starting from zero actually, which is the null string. So one, so if I have L-I-V-E, so let's say X is L-I-V-E, then basically X one is basically L and X two is equal to I and so on. All right, and of course, in this case, M is equal to four. And I of course starts with zero, meaning that X zero, sorry, zero is empty or null string. All right, so we define this variable D I J to be the min or simply the added distance between x i strings up to x i one to x i sorry string up to x i uh, let me write it this my notation might not be right between x up to 
position i and y up to position j so for example if i say d 1 and 2 and uh, the example that we had was x was live and y was life so we are actually finding the uh, minimum added distance with l and l i and in this case of course if d is equal to 4 and 4 then we are finding the minimum added distance between live and l i f e theek hai so this is uh, the basic notation that we use we will use this variable or 2d array to store the added distance between the two strings up to position i of x and up to position j of y and of course d m and n is the added distance between x and y the full string x and y all right so what are the sub problems here the sub problems are the various sub problems smaller values of i and j so these are the sub problems the final problem is d m and n so those i and j's would vary from 0 to m for i and 0 to n for j so naturally you can represent this set of information as a 2d matrix and we will see that next so all right so so you can think of this i hope you can see this table so we have x intention and y execution so x is on the left side the y axis and uh, mm, yeah actually you was thoda sa mesha ye confuse karta hai so so intention is of course on the uh on the y axis but this is the first index i right and execution is on the x axis so this is the second index j so we have made a matrix so how what is the length of intention i and t e n that is 5 and then we have 9 intention is 9 execution is how much e x e 3 c u 5 so both of them are 9 right but we also have a hash there hash or number symbol which is the null string so we therefore make a matrix of size 10 by 10 all right remember i and j starts from 0 to m and 0 to n so here m is intention uh, i the first intention i n t e n 5 and then 4 which is 9 and execution which is also uh, 9 so in this case both strings are of the same length so now let's look at the matrix itself so this is hash which means the null string and then you have hash for the other which is also a null string so what is the cost required to move from one null to the other null the cost is zero if you don't need to do any operation right so now let's look at this number here one so you have an i here this is x i is the first character of the string x so what is the cost if you want to move from this i to the hash which is null 
which means that you will have to remove or delete this i. So what is the cost for that? You will have to, assuming cost for deletion is one, so the cost is one. So in other words, if you go from zero to i, uh, sorry, zero to the string above it, I hope you can see my cursor here. I think it was a highlight to hora hoga table. Table highlight hora? Yes, sir, hora. Hora hai na, thik hai. So ye jo one hai idhar, thik hai na? So how do you get this one? From this zero, you add one to go here. So similarly, let's say I go to the next one, two. So now I n ko aapne null pe leke jana, iska matlab hai ke aapne one se ek or add karna hai, wo n ko bhi delete karna hai. So ek solution maha paas tha, which is from I to null, usko use karke humne I n to null nikaal liya, simply by doing one more deletion. And similarly, you can fill out the entire column here. So if you want to move from the full string intention to the null string, you will have to do nine deletions. So you have a nine there, up there. Okay. So let's look at the other side. So let's say the second So this is E of the second string. If you want to go from, if you want to, first string is of course null. So this is null. So if you want to go from null to E, so you have to do one insertion. And let's say insertion key cost me one, that will one over So we have moved from null to E. Similarly, if you want to move from null to E X, you start from null to E and again insert X. So that is two three, four, five, six. So you can easily fill out these values. All right. So similarly, if you, uh, so this is how you can fill out the first value. And this is actually done with initialization. If you look at the algorithm, uh, let's look at the algorithm. So basically you start with D00 is equal to zero, which is the matrix with, because if you move from null to null is of course zero. And then D I comma zero is equal to I, meaning that you're deleting uh, characters of I to get to the null string Y. Okay. So this is the one that we did the vertical column. So I vertical bandra us, us table mein. What happened? <laughs> so the other one, of course, is D zero J is equal to J, which is the horizontal line that we filled out the first horizontal line and then you have the recursion formula so where we recurse over the entire matrix from i to m and j to n so let me actually write this separately maybe that would be better okay so the main formula now is the recursion formula, which is basically D, I, J. So min, so min of three possible options. Uh, one option is for deletion. The other option is for uh, subtraction, uh, sorry, uh, insertion. And the third is for uh, substitution. So what is that? D, I minus one, J, plus one. So this is actually deletion. 
ठीक है अदर इज डी आई जे माइनस वन प्लस वन प्लस वन ऑफ कोर्स इज द कॉस्ट फॉर इंसर्शन सो दिस इज दिस इज इंसर्शन एंड देन डी आई माइनस वन जे माइनस वन प्लस वन आई एम एज्यूमिंग द कॉस्ट फॉर सब्सिट्यूशन इज ऑल्सो वन यू कैन मेक इट टू लेवेंटाइन में ये टू होगा ठीक है so this is substitution but this would this cost would only occur if this uh this character x i and x j is different so if x i is not equal to y j if they are equal of course there is no substitution required right so let's say aapke paas एक पोजीशन पे एक्स का वैल्यू आई थी तो दूसरी की भी वैल्यू आई है राइट तो कोई चेंज तो करना नहीं पड़ रही कोई ऑपरेशन करना नहीं पड़ रहा तो देर शुड बी नो कॉस्ट ठीक है सो जो आपका जो रिकर्शन फॉर्मूला है टू फिल आउट द एंटायर मैट्रिक्स इज दिस सिंपल वन फॉर्मूला विच वेर यू हैव थ्री ऑप्शन एक इंसेशन का है एक डिलीशन का है एक सब्सिट्यूशन का है इसमें से जो सबसे मिनिमम से जो आंसर आएगा वो डी आई जे में आप डाल देंगे एंड इन दिस वे यू फिल आउट द एंटायर फॉर्मूला सो नाउ यू नोटिस दैट वी आर सॉल्विंग द बिगर प्रॉब्लम ऑफ द होल स्ट्रिंग एक्स एंड द होल स्ट्रिंग वाई बाय जस्ट लुकिंग एट थ्री ऑप्शन द नियरेस्ट थ्री ऑप्शन वन ऑप्शन इज पिछला जो डिलीशन से आया था एक इंसर्शन से आया था एक सब्सिट्यूशन से आया था एंड देन वी कंटिन्यू इन दैट क्वेश्चन any questions <clears throat> so let's uh, go back to our figure so let's uh, look at uh the other option just to get an idea so this is t of x right and uh ye kaun sa hai y ka koi number hai So, ये E है कॉलम फाइव ठीक है T क्या फाइव कौन सा कॉलम आया हमारे पास फाइव आया राइट चाहती मुझे थोड़ी सी हेल्प चाहिए होगी ये कौन सा भी एक्स का कौन सा करेक्टर है सर इंटेंशन का आई है सर आई है और वाई का क्या करेक्टर है
वाई का ये है नंबर पे आ रहा है अच्छा ये मेरा कसम है तो नहीं कर रहा सही ई e, ओके okay, यहाँ T है मेरे पास राइट right? X पे ठीक है और Y पे मेरे पास इफ आई एम नॉट मिस्टेकन इज E राइट इज दैट फाइन सर Y एक्सिस पे N है और X एक्सिस पे नल है X पे क्या है नल करेक्ट है सर थोड़ा सा ऊंचा बोले आवाज नहीं आई मुझे सर ये जो स्लाइड इसके अंदर आपका मैट्रिक्स फिल नहीं हुआ बस सिर्फ सर फर्स्ट टू एंड फर्स्ट कॉलम फिल्ड है अच्छा एक सेकंड कौन सी स्लाइड है सो ओके इसमें तो फुल हुआ मेरे ख्याल से इसमें फिर हुआ है और राइट सो दिस इज और राइट सो लेट्स इसमें फिल हुआ है शायद रो फाइव सो ये ई है कॉलम फाइव सो लेट्स लुक एट दिस वन ये एक्स पे आप टी है मतलब uh, एक्स एक्सिस का जो इंटेंशन का टी आ रहा है और एग्जीक्यूशन का ई e आ रहा है राइट right? इस yes, बेस पे राइट right? तो ये सेवन yes, हमने यहाँ फिल किया हुआ है तो इफ यू लुक एट दिस वैल्यू फाइव विच इज एक्स जो प्रीवियस हमारे पास था फाइव तो फाइव प्लस हमने हेयर बाय द वे यहाँ लेविस्टाइन डिस्टेंस यूज हुआ हुआ है ठीक है तो फाइव एक ऑप्शन है कि हमने T और E को करना है तो T और E इज ए डिफरेंट वैल्यू इसका मतलब है सब्सटीट्यूशन होगी सो सो फाइव प्लस टू इज सेवन ठीक है तो ये सिक्स है मेरे पास सिक्स पे हमने राइट right जाना है तो इसे इंसर्शन ठीक है सो so, इंसर्शन में एक वैल्यू होगी सिक्स प्लस वन इज ऑल्सो सेवन सो और ये इधर हम देखें ये वाला सिक्स वेयर हमारे पास नीचे E है और आपने ऊपर वाला T डिलीट करना है तो ये भी एक वन ऐड होगा सो so, तीनों ऑप्शन से हमारे पास सेवन आ रहा आंसर मिनिमम ऑफ कोर्स इज सेवन तो यहाँ हमने सेवन एंटर कर दिया so, तीनों ऑप्शन हमने देखी विच इज द थ्री वैल्यूज जस्ट बिलो द डायगनल वैल्यू मतलब एक बिलो है विच इज थ्रू डिलीशन एक टू लेफ्ट है विच इज थ्रू इंसर्शन और एक यू आपके पास डायगनल विच इज सब्सटीट्यूशन और जिसपे सब्सटीट्यूशन हो रही है T and E, it's a different. ठीक है इसमें सब्सटीट्यूशन हो रही है तो नाउ यू हैव फिल्ड दिस वैल्यू विद मिनिमम इन दिस के तीनों तरीके से एक ही वैल्यू आ रही थी सो वी विल कम बैक टू दिस नोशन के ये तीनों से एक ही वैल्यू आ रही है सो नाउ लेट्स मूव फॉरवर्ड तो ये अब x का मेरा t है लेट्स से और मेरा इधर भी टी है राइट आई एन टी का दिस इज नाइन दिस इज एट दिस इज नाइन सो अब एट को मैं सब्सिट्यूट आई मीन इफ आई डू सब्सिट्यूशन डायगनल में जाऊं तो एट में आई विल नॉट नीड टू एड एनीथिंग राइट बिकॉज वो टी टी को सब्सिट्यूशन हो नहीं रहा सो so, यहाँ एड जीरो हो रहा मतलब ये सब्सटीशन का कॉस्ट जीरो है सो दिस इज द मिनिमम दैट वी डू सो डायगनल वाला हमने फिर यहाँ चूज किया और एट ही रहने दिया अदरवाइज हम इधर से ऊपर जाते हैं नाइन से ऊपर आते तो यहाँ टेन होना था इधर से ऊपर आते तो यहाँ भी टेन होना था बट मिनिमम इस केस में 
a tira because diagonal would give you the minimum value because substitution did not occur the cost was zero is that point clear So the final value that we have in this matrix, the top rightmost value, which is D, M, and N, in this case, 9, 9, is 8. So this is actually the added distance between these two words, intention and execution. And of course, for this particular case, again, your diagonal may hamge because dono may N or N tha. Yaan bhi N hai. Y ka, uska bhi y ka n hai. So there is no substitution. Cost to move from the previous character to this character is zero. So we have value upar le hai, 8 ko upar le hai. Or is cell mein jo value hai, this is the added distance of these two strings. Ab is pure matrix mein, koi bhi ab cell le le. So that would give us the added distance for that particular X and that particular Y up till that position. Okay, so, sorry, sub problems on the solve KV and we have solved, placed it in this matrix. But Hamari, at least for this particular case, desired problem thi wo final thi, wo top right most may after answer mil rafska. So any question here? So the minimum added distance or simply the added distance is the minimum num minimum cost incurred in transforming string X to string Y using the operations insertion deletion and substitution so this is a definition for added distance and depending on the cost that you assign to insertion deletion and substitution there are at least two variations common variations one variation is which all three costs are the same and the other variation in which the cost of substitution is twice that of the cost for insertion and deletion and this particular variation is called a Levenstein distance. So, so one way of understanding why Levenstein distance is, uh, uh, you can say, meaningful is that you can think of a substitution as a deletion and an insertion. Two operations are. Pehle aapne jo character, ek x ka jo character tha, wo delete kiya. Or the y ka character tha, wo add kar diya. So ye substitution hogi, but in terms of insertion and deletion. So do apne operations insertion and deletion ki ki, or let's say insertion and deletion ki cost one one thi, to two cost hogi substitution ki. Or aapko is matrix mein bhi wo nazar aa raha hai. So koi bhi aap point lete hai, ye five ka value hai, five ki value hai, Either se aap idhar aayenge to ye insertion hai. Idhar se idhar jayenge to ye deletion hai. Or idhar se diagonal jayenge to wo substitution hai. So you notice that substitution karke jayenge to 5 bhi, wo bhi 5 answer aa raha hai. Insertion or deletion karke ja rahe to wo bhi 5 bhi aa raha hai. Thik hai? Uh, but if you are not using Lamenstein distance, let's say dono ki cost 1 hoti or sirf yehi wala cell hum dekh rahe hote to Minimum value yaha kya hoti? Either five hota, ke kuch or hota? Four hota. Four hota. Four kyu hota? Because three plus one hona tha. Which would be the minimum? Dusra four plus one five ho jata, four plus one five ho jata, or ek three plus one tha four. To hamne four yaha lagana tha. 
जब हम लेफ्ट से राइट जाएंगे तो मतलब हम इंसर्ट कर रहे हैं लेफ्ट टू राइट जा रहे हैं तो हम इंसर्ट वाई में इंसर्ट कर रहे हैं मतलब जो हमारा जो नीचे वाला स्ट्रिंग है ना उसमें इंसर्शन कर रहे हैं नीचे से ऊपर वाले जो जा रहे हैं तो हम कह रहे हैं कि वो जो एक्स स्ट्रिंग है उसमें से वो वाला करेक्टर डिलीट कर रहे हैं ठीक है और इसी तरह से ही आप फिर अलाइनमेंट कर सकते हैं ठीक है ना हमें हमने कहा था शुरू में कि यू कैन इफ यू डू एडिट डिस्टेंस आउटकम दैट यू गेट इन कंप्यूटिंग एडिट यू ऑल्सो गेट एन अलाइनमेंट सो हाउ डू यू गेट द अलाइनमेंट यू स्टार्ट विद द लास्ट सो यू स्टार्ट विद द लास्ट सेल विच इज एट हेयर विच इज एन 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 यू फॉलो यू वॉट वी कॉल ए बैक ट्रेस यू फॉलो पॉइंट बैक टू द स्टार्ट based on what you chose to go to that position for example aapne ye ye wala 8 bharne ke liye kis tarah humne isko 8 bhara humne isko bharne ke liye humne pichla wala 8 mein 0 add kiya right to iska matlab hai ki jo hamara t o t uh, sorry jo n jo n tha wo matlab it was a complete wahan there was nothing changing there so n and n was a alignment theek hai but aap koi aur option dekh le let's say uh, uh what happened so you can take any other value so let's say if you take look at this seven value here yahan six hai aapke paas yahan five hai theek hai to yahan of course you have a substitution or you can think of a deletion and an uh, addition uh, and a insertion theek hai substitution mein bhi of course dono characters jo honge wo aligned honge but आपने पहला ऊपर वाला कलेक्टर नीचे वाला कलेक्टर से रिप्लेस कर दिया ठीक है और लेट्स लुक एट सम या शुरू में देखते हैं लेट्स सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस वन हेयर ये जो आई है इधर हमारा सो यू वुड हैव टू डिलीट दिस टू गो बैक टू द नल स्ट्रिंग सो आई डिलीशन का मतलब ये है कि आई ऊपर जो लिखा हुआ है नीचे एस्टेरिक होगा एस्टेरिक ऑफ कोर्स इज नल स्ट्रिंग तो ऊपर आपने आई को डिलीट किया सो so, जब आप उसको अलाइन कर रहे हैं ऊपर आपके पास स्ट्रिंग uh, आएगा करेक्टर आएगा नीचे आपके पास डिलीशन है तो कुछ भी नहीं आएगा इंसर्शन है तो ऊपर एस्टेरिक आएगा नीचे वो वैल्यू आएगी तो इस तरह आप करके आपको कम्प्लीट आपको अलाइनमेंट मिल जाती है और अलाइनमेंट जैसे मैंने कहा फ्रॉम दिस टू डी मेट्रिक्स आपने सिंपली बैक ट्रेस करना है यूजिंग द पॉइंटर्स टू विच सेल वाज यूज्ड टू फिल द नेक्स्ट सेल किससे मिनिमम आ रहा है कई दफा आपके पास तीन ऑप्शंस होती हैं जैसे इंसर्शन डिलीशन और सब्सटीट्यूशन से तीनों से एक ही वैल्यू आ रही है तो आपके पास तीनों ऑप्शन होती है तो यूजली विल यूज द सब्सटीट्यूशन ऑप्शन ठीक है बिकॉज अदरवाइज आप एक एक्सटेरिक डाल के इधर करके कर देंगे उधर इंस्ट्रक्शन डालेंगे तो बात वही बन जाएगी तो हम सब्सटीट्यूशन वाला करके उसको शो कर देंगे सो इफ यू डू ए बैक ट्रेस यू गेट एन अलाइनमेंट ऑफ द स्ट्रिंग्स एज वेल सो अलाइनमेंट इज ए यू कैन से सेकेंडरी आउटकम ऑफ कंप्यूटिंग द एडिट डिस्टेंस so is this point clear back trace and pointers so ye basically is in slides mein discuss hua hua but it's fairly straight forward
So you will notice that the backtrace is shown as a line on this uh, matrix. So essentially, the line traces back to the cell from which that cell was filled. So this is basically the algorithm. The only addition is that you are adding uh, a, a pointer to the cell from which the new cell was filled. And then at the end of the day, you do the backtrace. In this case, the line is now drawn out for the uh, backtrace. So you get the alignment as shown here. Uh, the two strings are shown with asterisks and the exact alignment. So where there is substitution with no change, the same character in X and Y, where there's a substitution with the change, the two characters would be different. So T-I-O-N is exact alignment. And then for example, in other places, E and X are substitutions and so on. And then you have deletion, for example, I is deleted. And in other cases, I think U is addition and so on. So we are actually running out of time. So maybe let me mention one more other thing. All right. So let me mention one more uh, approach, which is called the longest common sub sequence. So we talked about the Hamming distance, which we said only did substitution. There was no addition and subtract, uh, no addition and insertion and deletion. And then we talked about added distance, which is a general uh, approach, which considers both insertion, all insertions, deletions, and substitution. The longest common subsequence uh, does not consider substitution. It has only insertions and deletions. And basically, in this case, we are trying to align the two strings at only those positions where there is an exact match. And we count the number of positions at which there is an exact match and there's alignment. So that is the length of the longest common subsequence. Mm -hmm. So for example, uh, हमारे uh, पास intention and execution था. so in intention and we had execution so so tion of course would match exactly so that is but there will be some other matches as well uh, let me see execution क्या था उसमें E X E uh, C U T I O N T I O N would match. Uh, actually, it's kind of difficult to explain the write, write it in this way. Mm. So basically, uh, the length of with the complete length, there might be some characters in between that are not overlapping. Uh, in this case, may have TION was an overlap. Was there any other overlap? I can't figure it out directly from where figure may pass some So if we consider that TION is the only overlap, TION is the only overlap with TION. So now the length of the LCS would be, of course, four. But they might be at other positions after uh, 
स्ट्रेचिंग और कंप्रेसिंग द स्ट्रिंग एट विच देर इज एग्जैक्ट मैच तो वो सारा हमने एग्जैक्ट मैच का सम लिखना है विच इज कॉल्ड द लेंथ ऑफ द लॉन्गेस्ट कॉमन सब सिक्वेंस सो सो दिस वे वी डोंट डू ए सब्सटीट्यूशन सॉरी वी डोंट डू ए या एग्जैक्टली वी डोंट डू ए सब्सटीट्यूशन इफ इट डजेंट मैच इट मीन्स इट डजेंट मैच दिस नॉट दे नो कॉमन सब सिक्वेंस ठीक है Mm-hmm. Actually, I think I didn't properly explain this uh, example. Take the him execution intention. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, i ke niche mere paas asterisk hai so can someone uh, repeat this with me i ke niche asterisk hai then what what happens after that i n ke niche x ki substitution hai e ki substitution hai can, can someone uh, repeat this so this is a figure ye mera your screen reader nahi pad raha n ke niche e ke asterisk hai p ke niche x hai e ke niche bhi e hai asterisk ke niche pe c hai एन के नीचे यू टी के नीचे भी यू है टी है सॉरी आई के नीचे आई है ओ के नीचे ओ एन एन के नीचे एन अच्छा तो इन दिस केस द मैच ओनली इज टी आई ओ एन कोई और मैच हो रहा है अलोंग द स्ट्रिंग नो सर ऊपर और नीचे एक ही करैक्टर है ई एम एस फोर्थ वर्ड ई हो रहा है ठीक है एग्जीक्यूशन में ई और ऊपर इंटेंशन का ई ठीक है तो इसका मतलब लॉन्गेस्ट कॉमन सीक्वेंस इसमें फिर फाइव है ठीक है ना सो वी काउंट द नंबर ऑफ टाइम्स इन द अलाइनमेंट एट विच बोथ स्ट्रिंग्स हैव द सेम वैल्यू ठीक है सो दैट इज बेसिकली द लॉन्गेस्ट कॉमन सीक्वेंस इन दिस केस इट वुड बी फाइव सो दिस इज अनदर वे ऑफ सो इन दिस केस वी डोंट काउंट सब्सिट्यूशन जहां आपके पास करेक्टर चेंज हो रहा है वो काउंट नहीं कर रहे सिंपली जहां एग्जैक्ट मैच हो रहा है उसको हम काउंट कर रहे सो लॉन्गेस्ट कॉमन सीक्वेंस हेयर वुड बी देन फाइव फोर तो टी आई ओ एन का और ई भी मैच कर रहा है ई ऊपर नीचे दोनों मैच कर रहे हैं सो एल सी एस निकालने के लिए भी आपको एडेड डिस्टेंस का एल्गोदम सॉल्व करना पड़ता है यू हैव टू डू द अलाइनमेंट एंड देन यू विल बी एबल टू फाइंड द एल सी एस वेर ईच ऑफ दो करेक्टर्स in the two strings are exactly the same so iska ek aur form bhi hota which is normalized lcs so normalization mein simply aap uh, distance ko 0 aur 1 ke darmiyan kar dete hain while lcs of course 0 and maximum length tak hota hai so normalization iski kis tarah hoti hai simply length of lcs divided by the max length of x and length of y so basically aap the length of the two string jo bhi max hai usse divide kar de to aapka jo maximum value hogi phir 1 hogi so now your distance is varies between 0 and 1 so any distance ke sath bhi ye kar sakte hain aap excuse me sir sir quiz ka time ho gaya hai ओके सॉरी क्विज का टाइम हो गया सॉरी सॉरी ठीक है सो टाइम मेरे बस देखा नहीं था चले आप फिर स्टार्ट कर लें क्विज इसमें एग्जैक्ट टाइम स्टार्ट किया हुआ था ओ फाइव पे यस सर सेलेक्ट किया हुआ था यस सर अच्छा अच्छा मुझे इलेवन ट्वेंटी तक है अच्छा साध है इधर यस सर आप लोग टेस्टिंग क्विजेस टैब में जाएं तो मुझे तो नजर आ रहा है आप में से किसी को भी नहीं व्यू हो रहा 
दोबारा चेक करें सर मुझे ना कुछ शो नहीं हो रहा हो गया अब टेस्ट एंड क्विजेस में ना उसको एक दफा रिफ्रेश कर ले अपने पेज को हां अब हो रहा है यार 